This is the Gervin Vector. Now, the Gervin Vector is a bit of a odd fork, as you can uh, see as I pan down. It's more of a, I think it was described as a cross-link design, and it's got an elastoma right there in the middle, and as it goes down, you've still got a bit where to go, cantilever mounts, all the way to the bottom, with the... Uh, so this Gervin Vector, I believe, is the first generation. The first generation came with one inch steerers. Now this Gervin Vector, I had to search and search and search for them. Um, it ended up, it's cost me an arm and a leg, and it, it, you know, it's, it's probably not worth it, but I've always wanted one in my uh, collection, and I've got a perfect bike to go on it. So this is gonna be the first part of a two, maybe three part uh, series on the Gervin Vector and the Proflex 853, which will be coming up next. This in particular vector came all the way from Italy. Uh, found it on eBay. You can find them on eBay from every now and again, but you have to be prepared to pay for them. Um, <laughs> and they're in varying conditions. User reviews from people in the past that I've Googled for don't tend to rate them, um, but they're just, I think they're a cool design. Um, Gervin eventually sort of went out of business when they got took over by uh, K2. Yeah, apparently they just didn't keep up with suspension design uh, technology and um, eventually just uh, just failed, I guess. This particular vector, I believe, is the first generation. Um, it has a one inch steerer and the elastoma with no sort of adjustment on it. Um, the elastoma on this one needs to be replaced because it is completely shut, completely dried out, split, and when I try to put, apply a bit of pressure, it burst and crushed. Uh, the later vectors, I believe, went from the one inch steerer to one that had a one and one eighth inch on the crown race for some strange reason. Um, on the bottom, so you still had to use an adapter for the top. Uh, and then you've got various designs after that, um, which eventually got replaced with, uh, the elastome, sorry, got replaced with a small shock. Um, and I think that's when it started to be the no lean versions. Correct me if I'm wrong there, because the information about the vector is a little hard to come by. Like I can't find out when this was first introduced. So yeah, this is the vector. Front on. I mean, it looks cool, doesn't it? It just looks cool. The light's faded again. So there's the elastoma. It's crushed. If I zoom in a little bit, and pan down. This is what happens after all these years of use or non-use. Um, the elastomas dry out and when I applied a bit of pressure it just crushed and you can see underneath there you've got the I guess it's sort of a shock. It is a shock. Um, normally all this would be full of elastoma to add for the to act as sort of like a spring to create the sponginess and then the dampening is in there. Um, so I've got to replace that, which I'm going to do today before I install them. There's a bumblebee just hanging around the wheel. Um, replacement bushes, you can still find them. There's a place in uh, the States. Suspension parts, I'm definitely going to link it. I'll link it in the description. Um, again, they are not cheap, so you're paying out for the fork to start with and then you're paying out for the bushes. Uh, you can probably make your own. Uh, I don't know how hard or easy that would be making moulds and then pouring the poly whatever it's called. I've bought the replacement bushes so I've got to work out how to take this apart. And again going back to the guides there isn't very much. The the one guide that comes with the with the bushes it literally starts with take the shock out of the fork. There's no sort of hint at how to do that. So looking at this, we've got steel tube, it's clamped in my stand. One, two, three bolts for the stem, as you'd usually see. You can take this off, undo these bolts and pull out the steer tube. That's how you fit them in your bike, in your headset it's still gonna be connected here. 
Now I've got two bolts either side, one, two, which I think I might be able to release these and push out this pin here. And a bit further down at the bottom is a similar thing. So there's one bolt there, one bolt the other side, pin going through the middle, I'm hoping if I press those out, um, that will be it. And then I can take the stem off, take the shock out and work on it from there. The rest of it can come apart. You obviously got the bolt right here, which will release the outside legs once you've taken out a bolt that's in there. So this whole thing can come apart and that is uh, just one of those compression rings. Um, just clipped over there, so I guess you pop those out and then you can take the whole thing apart and re-grease everything. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. Try and replace those elastomers in part one. I've already gone on for a little bit, so let's give it a go and um, see what happens. So let's see what I'm doing here. By the way, these forks, fork, sorry, this fork, um, I believe comes from somewhere around 93. Um, the Proflex 8953 definitely, according to the brochures, came with the Vector 1. Um, Apart from that, I'm not entirely sure of years because uh, there's not much information out there, like I said. Um, and all these bolts, one, two, three, there, I've already loosened and they are a five mil. So I should be able to take off the top cap and hopefully There you go, there's... <laughs> Oh, you can see it. There's a suspension in action. Do, do, do. Now I might have to take them out for this. You have to sort of... There we go. Oh, my stand almost fell over. So I just pulled that straight out. Um, and I can hopefully then undo the two bolts that I said before and get this elastoma out. Okay, the five more I'm going to do this too. Yep, five mil. Yeah, five mil for everything. So you can adjust the tracking of the front wheel as well. Um, by using these because normally obviously the fork and the stem are independent of each other but this is built in so you don't just you don't just loosen the stem to move it around on the forks to make sure all your wheel is in line you have to play about with adjusting these loosening all this and adjusting it all um, which might be a bit of a pain not tried it yet can I just knock that out? Again, I'm probably doing this wrong. I have no idea how to do this. There's no real guides that I've found. My 5 16th socket seems to fit right in there. Uh, so that's equivalent to what? 8 mil ish <laughs> Let's see if this works. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I can knock that out. So yeah, at the moment the stem is still holding it, so I've got to knock it all the way out. There we go. Yes! So I've knocked that out just enough now to be able to swing this free. Okay. Okay. Fork comes off. I mean fork. Stem comes off. It looks like inside there's a little cap with a couple of uh, grommets, bushings. So obviously we need to uh, remove this I guess and inside which is where one of the guides came in useful there is a allen 
key, which I believe is a four mil. Okay, so that took a bit of force, but I just put my Allen key through the little hole there instead of um, trying to use the longer length with little leverage. Um, and this whole shaft actually turns, so I was able to just rotate that. Now this is what the guide says. So hopefully this is right. So that's got a bolt in there that's covered in crap. I'm going to slide this off, there we go. So that is just a lubricated shaft. Hopefully, hopefully now. Yes. Top cap. <laughs> One split pancake horrible elastoma. centre and bottom pancake elastoma so the new ones looks like it's going to be another day of changing light but anyway the new ones as I say they come these are the oh yeah changing lights these are the ones uh, suspension fork parts made in the USA these are the medium variants, you can get the firm variants as well. Um, and so you're going to have a short stack one and a long stack one, uh, but they both have to go on. After a quick check um, on the suspension parts website, it says to install the small elastoma first. Maybe I'll just clean that off. Here's Dovey. Here's Dovey. Okay, so back to it. All cleaned off. Small elastoma apparently goes on first, according to the suspension parts website. Then your spacer. Then your large elastoma. How is this ever going to have enough room for the shock? And then that, apparently. There are different versions that you can get. Oh God. There are different versions that you can get. Um, mine had two bushes on it to start with, so that's what I got. Um, and now it literally just says to reassemble the uh, opposite way. So you've got to go back on there. I've got to make sure the windows in the top here line up with the... Stem has to go back on somehow. Okay, gotta make sure all the washers are in the right place. So I had two little covers, one either side. Now I've got to knock that through. I'm using my mallet so it's a bit softer. Uh, I'm going to press it in with my voice. Seems like a more sensible option. Yeah, let's use the voice. This works a lot better. Just put it in the vice. Just press it through. It's going to poke out the other side, hopefully. Okay, and now once I've got that, Everything should be through, yep, there, okay. all the way through. Well, good news is I don't have any parts left over, uh, so that's all in. Just need to, it seems all pressed together nicely at the top there. Uh, we've got the elastomas in now, nice and fresh. Yeah, just do these up. But I think we should put it in the frame now, once we're this on see how it looks and then I can do the rest of the build video for tomorrow because I think this VEC video might have gone on a while as I said if, if you've got any information on the vectors like interesting information um, when they were first produced and all that sort of stuff leave it in the comments because finding the information on these is a bit vague we're getting to fit the forks now um, I've just done a trial run 
it didn't work out with using two one and one eighth inch headsets. Uh, I've got the one and one eighth inch in the bottom, which fits. I've got the that goes on and it's snug because it fits the frame and it fits the crown race of the uh, fork. The top, however, you can't use the one and one eighth inch. Um, I tried it. The spacers, you're obviously going to have to pack the whole steerer up with spacers. I don't have that many. So, I'm mixing and matching. Um, one and one eighth inch at the bottom, one and one eighth inch to one inch adapter in the top. That is going to be had, that is going to have a one inch headset apparently not pressed in there. Okay, that's not good. That's going to have the one inch headset on there, which isn't going to look good at all. Um, and then we're going to put the forks on. Well, that was an absolute nightmare to install. Just everything is just fiddly. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got the one and one eighth inch lower headset, the one inch upper. Um, basically, obviously, you have to try and get everything compressed together as much as possible um, because it and because it's reacting against each other, it's kind of awkward. So the top cap has to compress down and then clamp all the stem. But I think, I think I've got it now. They are the Gervin Vector V1 or V2 fork on uh, on the off-road, the Proflex, the A5V. Um, I hope that replacement elastoma video was useful. Um, it's actually looking a lot better now, a lot better. Um, there's actually a bit of travel on this, which I'll show you. On the ground, right here, hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate. Let's put the bars on. <laughs> there's only a little bit. But applying my weight, that's how much they're moving. And obviously this design is um, kind of weird. Apparently it takes a bit of a while to get used to because obviously as you saw then, because as you saw then, when you compress the fork, it sort of moves the rear wheel back or moves the frame forward depending on how you look at it. So it moves the rear wheel, moves the front wheel back or the frame forward depending on how you look at it. So as I press down, it's just pulling everything around and I mean it's a bit of comfort it's more than the flex stem um, so next video is going to be getting all this together the on the off-road on the 853 getting it all together it's full DRXT uh, we've got the vector and it's gonna look super snazzy uh, so that will be probably coming out next week because uh, this is coming out on a Sunday and you know Saturday and Sunday uploads uh, so yeah the Gervin Vector nice intriguing fork once I get all this together I'll be able to give it a test ride to see how it actually performs which I might take it to the pin TV group ride at Canuck maybe if it works properly we'll see how it goes but yeah, hope you like this little um, vector introduction, uh, the elastoma replacement. It's obviously very early design. A lot of things have improved over the years, a lot of things. Um, they have once or twice maybe tried to revisit this cross-link style suspension. Um, I just think it looks awesome. Like, I, I really like it. Um, and I've got the AMP fork coming up as well. I've got the pace. RC35, I've got a few to do, so yep, yeah, look out for the rest of this build coming out next week, and I'll leave it there, so thanks for watching.